This one must have come straight out of a horror movie if you were present witnessing this injury. The second case report was a retinal detachment due to CrossFit training. <laughs> that dude or, or that gal lost vision. This happened. Among them, one man, 32 years old, had an intracerebral hemorrhage stroke during a CrossFit session. The participant did not die, but he was left disabled. Moderate disability, requiring some help, but able to walk without assistance. Grüezi Tran, Gregory von Leberstark here. In a recent study that is dated into 2018, researchers set out to understand and examine CrossFit. They've analyzed the scientific literature concerning CrossFit. So that means they were trying to understand how much evidence is behind the CrossFit method in terms of different parameters. Let's jump into the study and see what they found out. Background states the following. CrossFit is recognized as one of the fastest growing high intensity functional training modes in the world. Therefore, the objective of this study is to analyze the findings of scientific literature related to CrossFit via systematic review and meta-analysis. So what they're saying is, hey, CrossFit is very popular and we wanted to find out if there's any evidence that we can attribute to this very popular workout method. Based upon these findings, the scientists came to the following conclusion. The current scientific literature, so the evidence related to CrossFit, has few studies with high level of evidence at low risk of bias. However, preliminary data has suggested that CrossFit practice is associated with higher levels of sense of community, satisfaction, and motivation. In the background, I found this statement from Greg Glassman, the founder of CrossFit, interesting. He says, meaningful statements about safety, efficacy, and efficiency, the three most important and interdependent facets of any fitness program, can be supported only by measurable, observable, repeatable facts, i.e. data. That's kind of funny because the scientists that are now looking at this meta-analysis, they're finding, well, there's not a lot of data to support the outcomes of CrossFit. And what is also interesting to note is that statement about safety and CrossFit is not really known for being a very safe sport. A consensus paper produced by the Consortium for Health and Military Performance and ACSM associated a potential emergence of a high injury risk with programs such as CrossFit. So there's a consensus paper, folks who came together who say there is a high level of injury risk associated with CrossFit. While positive influences on body composition and physical fitness were recognized, so yes, yes, it's working. We're not saying that it's not working. The consensus highlighted a disproportionate musculoskeletal injury risk from these demanding programs, particularly for novice participants, resulting in lost duty time, medical treatment, and extensive rehabilitation. Extensive rehabilitation. So what they're saying is, listen, the problem is these workouts are highly demanding when it comes to technique and we don't have adequate rest incorporated into these workout regimes. When we go into psychophysiological parameters, there's some interesting stuff happening. For example, they compared CrossFit training with a ACSM recommendation and the participants reported that it's more strenuous and these participants also reported greater fatigue, greater muscle pain and swelling and limb movement difficulties during or within 48 hours after the workout. So that's something that I find troublesome. I don't want to do a workout where I I can't even move my body, even though sometimes we'd like to chase the burn, we'd like to chase that, your leg day was so hard, I couldn't even walk down the stairs. I don't think that's a smart way to train, especially if we get a little bit older. And Cindy is a particular workout in the CrossFit regime, offers the same acute blood oxidative stress than a traditional bout of high intensity treadmill running and running at a minimum intensity of 90% maximum heart rate over 20 minutes. That is insane. Imagine running at 90% of your maximum on a treadmill for 20 minutes. Oh my God. The inclusion of rest intervals is not common practice in CrossFit prescriptions, even though there are designated rest intervals. And that's something that I see as well. Most people don't rest when it comes to these workouts because they're timed and they're competing amongst each other. And if you lack sufficient rest, injury risk 
goes up. The most common injury sites were shoulder and lower back followed by arm elbow with an injury rate of 3.1 events every 1000 hours of training. That equals to about five years of training if you say you do 200 hours of work per year. That's when you're very active. So that injury rate would mean that in those five years you will hurt yourself or injure yourself three times. A total of 186 lesions were reported with some participants injured more than once in a period of 18 months. So that's one and a half years. Nine of these cases required surgical intervention. Oof, that's hardcore. I was guessing five years based on my volume of training. But if you hurt yourself more than once in 18 months, that means you do a lot higher volume. In addition, when the participants were separated according to CrossFit experience, those who practiced CrossFit for more than six months showed significantly higher injury rates than those who practiced for less than six months. This study also reported a 45% injury prevalence rate among athletes with more than two years of practice. On the first look, that's strange. But given the fact that most folks will become more competitive once they have mastered certain techniques and lifts and workouts, then they overdo themselves. I would normally say that the better you are with your technique, the smarter you train. It's not about training harder, it's about training smarter. So if your technique is safer, then you should also minimize the risk of injury with more experience. The most common attributed causes of injury were inadequate form of movement, so technique is off, exacerbation of previous injury, so you hurt yourself, but you're like, yeah, I'm still going to the gym, I'm still going to the box, let's, let's bang those reps out, and you keep injuring yourself because you don't have enough rest to really fully recuperate from your injury. 64% of those who suffered an injury reported a reduction in training for one month or less due to injury. 64% of those people who got hurt had to stop working out for one month. That's a long time. The shoulder was injured most often during gymnastic movements, whereas the lower back was injured most often during powerlifting movements. You keep banging out those reps with high weights and with weightlifting exercises and even with the kettlebell. You're adding micro trauma after micro trauma and then one day it snaps. Here goes the nightmare stuff. The first case study examined a traumatic tear of the latissimus dorsi inflicted during the muscle up exercise. Latissimus dorsi that big muscle, it snapped, it teared. <laughs> Can you imagine? You're doing the muscle up and boom. The participant returned to complete pre-injury level of activity within six months. So this dude had to stop working out for six months. Now this one must have come straight out of a horror movie if you were present witnessing this injury. The second case report was a retinal detachment due to CrossFit training. <laughs> that dude or, or that gal lost vision. This happened. The retina was successfully reattached and vision was successfully recovered after four months. Oh my God. Oh, this is not funny. It's just Whoa, that's like what? You went to war or something? Another fact that I find interesting to note is thickness of the patellar and Achilles tendons increased significantly after the session. So imagine that the tendons in your upper body, especially the one that's in your shoulder, and there's a couple of them, that they're increasing and swelling as well. That means that the space in your shoulder, which is already tight, reduces even more. Combine that now with high intensity weight lifting exercise who are meant for one rep max with continuous reps. Oh my. Only two reported cases of rhabdomyolosis were found. That's the occurrence when you overdo it so much that the muscle actually breaks down. Now check this out. Three cases of cervical keratoid dissections were reported associated with CrossFit workouts. They worked out so hard that an artery that is going to your brain actually ruptured. While direct causality cannot be proven, the author speculated the high intensity CrossFit workouts likely led to the internal dissections in these participants. Oh my. And here goes probably the toughest injury of them all. Wow, 10 cases of strokes in participants. Now strokes, guys, that's just next level, my God. Among them, one man, 32 years old, had an intracerebral 
hemorrhage stroke during a CrossFit session. The participant did not die, but he was left disabled. Now that's not funny at all. Moderate disability, requiring some help, but able to walk without assistance. Now we don't know if this person already had some medical background in that area, but the fact that it is associated with the CrossFit workout really is disturbing. And it breaks my heart as a coach. I would never have anybody in here injure themselves so badly that they are being left disabled. That's, wow. It's hard to put in words, man. Wow. Now, please don't misunderstand this video as a bashing of CrossFit. They're also saying that they have found these great markers where people have experienced a significant increase in motivation, a significant increase in belonging to somewhere, and a significant increase in satisfaction, that they were satisfied, which is awesome. CrossFit also put kettlebells on the map to a certain degree where we can say it's awesome that CrossFit athletes are deciding to use kettlebells, even though maybe sometimes in a matter that I do not agree with, but they are popularizing the kettlebell as a tool of lifting, which is something that that we kettlebell coaches and kettle, the kettlebell world is profiting from. There's also a host of benefits and advantages that come with CrossFit training. I love the idea of combining the circuit training where you have cardiovascular training with strength training combined. You do a lot of workload in a shorter amount of time. And CrossFit folks are predominantly considered to be the fittest people walking on earth. With all that said, if a certain training modality offers a injury risk where scientists found a correlation between your workout method crossfit in that case with brain damage being left disabled losing vision tearing one of the biggest muscles that you have in your body then i believe there's something wrong and there's stuff that has to be addressed this study shows me once again why i'm so keen on lifting safely not only personally but also with our clients and with you guys why well, i believe safety is one of the most important aspects when you are lifting when you are younger maybe you don't feel it yet but when you get a little bit older your body definitely is losing its grace period and that's when safety measures are highly recommended thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video like it consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content and if you're looking for a kettlebell program that builds you up from a beginner to a slowly advanced trainee in the course of about three months and you maybe want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching because maybe you want to lose weight or you want to get in shape then check out 90 days of kettlebells you find the link in the description 14 day free trial included